Hello, this is Flipped Harbor for Algebra 2. In this video, we're going to talk about exponential and logarithmic equations. Now, our objectives for this lesson are to solve logarithmic and exponential equations, as well as solve logarithmic equations. Now, let's talk first about solving an exponential equation. Now, this is an exponential equation because we have the variable in the power location. So really what we need to do is get that variable out of the power. Now here's an example of the most basic type. When we have the same base number, in this case the twos right here, and we want to get the powers out of there, this is actually the easiest example because the only way these two sides are going to be equal, since they're both powers on two, is if the two powers are equal to each other. So this isn't that bad of an example because the base number is exactly the same on both sides. So when the base number is exactly the same on both sides, just set the powers equal. I finish off just by solving for the x, so I'll subtract the 2x over. I get negative x equals negative 4, so that means that x equals 4. And there's my solution. Okay, so let's take a look at another example. Here, we don't have the same base number, but there is a relationship here. I can turn that 8 into a 2. Now, the way I'm doing this is with a power. 8 is 2 cubed. So when I have 2 cubed, to the x power, that's actually 2 to the 3x because I multiply the powers. Now, since I have 2 on both sides as the base, now I go ahead and just set the powers equal to each other. So 3x equals x plus 4. And I can solve for the x. Subtract the x over, I get 2x equals 4. And then I divide by the 2, so I have x equals 2. Now, obviously, we're not going to always be able to make the base number the same on each side. So let's take a look where, you know, maybe we won't be able to do it. But first, I believe we can actually turn this 64 into a 4. Let's see, 4 squared is 16. Multiply by 4 again. So yeah, I can turn the 64 into 4 cubed. Again, since I have the same base number, I set the two powers equal to each other. And I can solve for the x. x equals 5. Now, this one... I'm not going to be able to turn that 6, excuse me, that 300 into a 6. No matter what power you try on 6, it's not going to work out nicely. You're not going to be able to write that 300 as 6 to the 5th power or something like that. So let's approach this from a totally different angle. I need to get that 2x out of there. So the way I can do that is by taking a logarithm of the entire equation. So really what I'm talking about doing is taking a logarithm of both sides of this equation. Now, any log base is going to work. It makes sense to use log base 10 or the natural log if we want to type it into our calculator. If we don't care to type it into our calculator, I'll take the log base 6. Now, the reason I choose the log base 6 is because that will totally get rid of the 6. If I use any other log base, it won't actually get rid of the 6. Yes, it will allow me to bring the 2x down in front, but it won't actually get rid of the 6. A log base 6 will get rid of the 6 of 2x. It's no longer in the power location. It's just 2x equals the log base 6 of 300. Now, I can still type this into my calculator if I use my log base change formula. But 
if I don't want to do that, if I'm not interested in actually typing it into my calculator, I can leave it like this and I can just divide the two over. So I have one half log base six of 300. And I could even go a step further and half could be a power on the 300. A one half power is a square root. So I could even take this a step further and say that this is the log base 6 of 10 square root of 3. Now what I did there was I took the square root of 300, I teased out the 100, which is 10 squared. So I brought that 100 out in front of the square root as a 10. 10 squared is 100, leaving a 3 inside that square root. Again, just in case we want to, I can go ahead and use my log base change formula and turn this into any log base I want. So maybe I want to do log base 10 of 10 times the square root of 3. I'm going to put some parentheses around that just so that you realize the log is operating on everything there. Divided by the log base 10 of 6. Now this is just the log base change formula. I explained that in a previous video. So if you're not sure how I did that, go take a look at the previous video about the properties of logarithms. And the only reason to do this is so that we can type it into our calculator. Okay, so let's take a look at solving a logarithmic equation. Now, when we talk about solving a logarithmic equation, our variable, in this case x, is locked inside a logarithm. So I need to get, that, get rid of that logarithm. I need to make it go away. And the way I'm going to do that is with a power. I see that this is a log base 3. So to get rid of it, I make each side of the equation an exponent on 3. Now that's going to get rid of the 3 and the log base 3, and I'm just going to have x squared. Now on the other side, 3 squared is 9. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Now I take the square root, and I get x equals plus or minus 3. Because when I take the square root, square root of 9 is 3, I should really include the plus or minus. So if I plug this back into my original equation, it would work out. The log base 3 of 3 squared is 2. The log base 3 of negative 3 squared is also 2. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Here, we're going to use a 10 to get rid of those logarithms. But before I do that, I need to combine these two logarithms. I can only use my power trick. Not really a trick, it's a method. But I can only use that when I have a single logarithm. So the way I'm going to do that is by using my difference formula. Okay, so first of all, let's get rid of some of this stuff here. All right, so what I need to do is use that property of logarithms that lets me combine these. So it's going to be a single logarithm with 15x on top divided by 5. Now this is going to work out nicely. So 15 divided by 3 is log. So I have the log of 3x equals 2. Now remember, whenever you don't see a base on this logarithm, it's what's referred to as a common logarithm. It's a log base 10. So to get rid of that, I make it a power on 10. I have to do that to the other side as well. The 10 and the log base 10 will go away. So now I have 3x equals 100, because 10 squared is 100. Divide by the 3. I get x equals, and I'm going to leave it as a fraction, 100 over 3. There we go. There's my answer. Okay, so let's take a look at another one.
Now this is just a single logarithm. This log base 3 is operating on the entire left side. I don't have to combine the x minus 2. It's already combined. And we know that because of the parentheses. If those parentheses were not there, I would move the 2 over. Now I would just do that by addition. But with these parentheses, I'm going to go ahead and get started just by putting it as a power on 3. Those cancel, leaving x minus 2 equals 9. And then all I need to do is add the 2 over. x equals 11. Pretty straightforward. There's my answer. Okay, that's it. That's all you need to know about doing this. We use logarithms to tease those powers out of the exponentials. We use powers to get rid of those logarithms. So they are inverse operations, so that's the way they're going to work. One's going to get rid of the other. Okay, so it's time for you to get to work. I'll see you in class, and I'll see you online.